Welcome to At the Public Library. Stay tuned now for news and events taking place at San Francisco's public libraries. The beautiful Richmond Branch Library, located at 351 9th Avenue, is open Tuesdays and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Wednesday with evening hours from 1 to 9 p.m., and Thursdays and Fridays from 1 to 6 p.m. The Richmond Branch Children's Room is open Thursdays and Fridays from 2 to 6 p.m., and Tuesdays and Saturdays, 10 to 6 p.m., with Wednesday evening hours, 2 to 8 p.m. Located atop Potrero Hill at 1616 20th Street, the Potrero Branch Library is open Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays from 1 to 6 p.m., and Wednesdays from 1 to 8 p.m. Located across the street from Stonestown, the Merced Branch Library at 155 Winston Drive is open Mondays and Tuesdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Wednesdays with evening hours from 1 to 9 p.m., and Thursdays and Fridays from 1 to 6 p.m. Looking for a great deal on books? Then drop by the Book Bay Bookstore in Fort Mason. Operated by the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library, the Book Bay Bookstore offers great prices on used books, records, and tapes. There's something for everybody at the Book Bay, and all proceeds of the Book Bay benefit the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library. The Book Bay Bookstore is located in the Fort Mason Complex, Building C, on the first floor. The store is open Wednesdays and Fridays from 11 to 5, Thursdays 11 to 8, and Saturdays and Sundays again from 11 to 5. The Book Bay also welcomes donations of books. If you have books you'd like to donate, call the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library at 557-4257 for more information. So, now you know, that's Bargain Books at the Book Bay Bookstore, Fort Mason, Building C. Welcome to City Watch, San Francisco's new government access television channel. Hi, I'm Supervisor Sue Bierman. City Watch was created to give you greater access to the services of city departments, agencies, boards, commissions, and the like. With this channel, the city can use television to encourage participation in government services and decision making. In the coming months, look for gavel to gavel coverage of public meetings and other programming of interest to all San Franciscans. Thank you for watching. The San Francisco Public Library Commission holds meetings in the main library four times a month. The full commission meets the first Tuesday of each month at 4.30 p.m. The Finance and Operations Committee meets the third Tuesday of each month, also at 4.30 p.m. The Planning Committee meets the third Wednesday of each month at 3.30 p.m. And the Building and Facilities Committee meets the first Tuesday of each month at 3 p.m. All of these meetings are held in the Lurie Room on the first floor of the main library in the Civic Center. This month's film showing at the Noe Valley Branch is Fritz Lang's M, starring Peter Lorre in the role of a child murderer. Shot in Germany on the eve of Nazi power in 1931, this suspense thriller is true to the expressionist style that Lang helped to pioneer in the 20s. Laurie plays Franz Becker, who has murdered eight children before the movie begins and is a creature driven by an instinct he cannot understand. M is presented in German with English subtitles. The film starts at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday, September 15th, at the Noe Valley Branch Library. Located at 451 Jersey Street. The Noe Valley Sally Brunn Branch Library has open hours Tuesdays from 10 to 12, 
and again from 1 to 6 p.m., Wednesday with evening hours from 1 to 9 p.m., and Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays from 1 to 6 p.m. Herb Kane's favorite branch library, the Golden Gate Valley Branch at 1801 Green Street, has open hours Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays from 1 to 6 p.m., and Wednesdays, 2 to 7 p.m. The Marina Branch Library, located at 1890 Chestnut Street, has open hours Tuesdays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Wednesday with evening hours 1 to 9 p.m. and Thursdays and Fridays from 1 to 6 p.m. On display this month at the main library is The Art of Calligraphy, recent works by Thomas Ingmeyer, and Calligraphy in Print, selections from the Harrison Calligraphy Collection. The Ingmeyer exhibit is on display in the main library through September and features recent works by the noted calligrapher. Originally trained as a landscape architect, Ingmeyer, who lives and works in San Francisco, started studying calligraphy in 1972 under renowned English scribe Donald Jackson. Five years later, he became the first American elected to craft member status in England's Society of Scribes and Illuminators. Well grounded in materials and methods of traditional calligraphy, Ingmeyer now focuses his work on the expression of calligraphy as a modern art form. Ingmeyer's work is exhibited widely in the United States. Also on display through September, on the third floor of the main library, is the exhibit Calligraphy in Print, selections from the Harrison Collection of Calligraphy and Lettering. The exhibit features selections from the San Francisco Public Library's own calligraphy collection which is housed in the Special Collections Department located in the main library. Dial a Story is a telephone service offering poems, rhymes, riddles, songs, and stories for children. Presented by the Office of Children's Services of the San Francisco Public Library, Dial a Story is offered in three languages, English, Spanish, and Cantonese. For English stories, dial 626 6516. For Spanish stories, dial 552-0535. And for Cantonese stories, dial 552-0534. Now here's a sampling of some dial-a-story fun. This story, which is an old Jewish folk tale, is based on Margot Zemach's version, It Could Always Be Worse. Once upon a time in a little village, a poor Jewish man lived with his mother, his wife, and his six children in a tiny house. With his mother and wife arguing, the children running and yelling, and the baby crying, it was so crowded and noisy that the man was miserable. So he went to the rabbi, a wise and learned man, for advice. Oh, rabbi, my house is so crowded and noisy, and I am so miserable. What should I do? Hmm, said the rabbi. Bring your chickens into the house. The man was confused, but he did as he was told. In a few days, he was back. Oh, Rabbi, he said, now it is even worse. The chickens fly about and cackle. Hmm, said the rabbi. Bring your goat into the house. The man did, and in a few days, he was back. Oh, learned Rabbi, he said, what could be worse? The goat butts and maws, and the chickens still cackle. Hmm, said the rabbi. Ah, bring your cow into the house. Moaning and a bit apprehensive, still the man did as he was told. The next day he was back. Oh, rabbi, he said, it is terrible. The cow kicks and moos, the goat butts and maws, the chickens fly about and cackle. What should I do? Hmm, said the rabbi. Take all of the animals out of the house. The man went home and put the cow, the goat, and the chickens back in the barn. The next day, he was back at the rabbi's. Oh, wise and learned rabbi, he said, how can I ever thank you? With only my family and their pleasant conversation, it is so spacious and peaceful in my house. The rabbi blessed the man and sent him back to his happy home. Now, hang up the phone, please. Goodbye.
The San Francisco Public Library Summer Reading Program for Children was a giant success this year as thousands of San Francisco kids participated in this annual event. And for the fourth year in a row, the San Francisco Giants were big supporters of the program. This year, children who successfully read eight books would receive tickets to the Giants game on September 25. On August 23rd, Peter McGowan, the Giants' managing general partner, came to the main library to present the tickets to Mayor Frank Jordan. Good afternoon, everyone. Wow, that's really some sound system. My name is Linda Geislinger, and I'm the uh, librarian in charge of the Maine Children's Department right here in the Maine Library. Welcome to each of you and to all of our special guests with whom you will be meeting very shortly. Some of them are up here in front, and others are around the room. We're delighted to have you all here for this very special event, uh, the collaboration between the library and the Giants and the Mayor's Office. And we're delighted to have you all here. But first of all, maybe we should find out, are there any Giants fans in the audience? Hey. <laughs> Put those caps on if you don't have them on yet. OK. OK, great looking. Welcome to everybody. Uh, we want to express our um, appreciation for the Giants organization support for the past four years uh, with our summer reading program here at the library. But of course, this season, maybe that's why we have so many tickets being requested this year. Are the Giants doing well this year? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, tonight starts a great series with the Atlanta Braves. We're going to win, aren't we? Yeah, right. <laughs> OK, the Giants have been doing a terrific job this year. And uh, we just know they're going to continue right into the playoffs and the World Series and all the rest. Yes. Uh, at this point, yes, good, good applause. At this point, I'd like to introduce to you uh, Jan Hutchins, a moderator from the San Francisco Giants. Welcome. Uh, thanks for this opportunity. It's my job really just to move the program along. I do want to make um, one point. Uh, yesterday, you might have had a chance to see uh, the Giants come from way down in the last innings. Robbie Thompson hitting a home run with two outs and two strikes in the bottom of the ninth to win the game. And for you young people, let that be a lesson to you to never give up and always believe in yourself. And that's maybe the greatest lesson that this sport can teach you. And that's what baseball is all about. It's never over uh, if you believe it's not over. Um, the Giants have done their best now in, with the new ownership to reinvigorate and work hard to be good citizens. And uh, this is just a part of our um, significant community outreach. It is um, the reflection of a four-year commitment now with the library. And we have one of our players who has adopted the library systems in general as uh, his particular cause. The Giants might be the only organization in professional sports that has 100% participation by all of its players in representing a cause or a nonprofit community group. And Brian Hickerson, the pitcher who will start tomorrow night, is the fellow who is representing us uh, and has taken on the cause of reading. He's a, an avid reader himself and does crossword puzzles uh, uh, frequently. And you might see him in this month's copy of the American Library Magazine reflecting uh, his commitment to libraries and the Giants' commitment to community. I'd, uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, a couple of VIPs here. Uh, you will get a chance to hear from later the mayor of San Francisco, Frank Jordan. My boss, the Giants' uh, managing general partner, and the fellow whose vision it is that we be good community citizens, Peter McGowan. We also have with us uh, representing city librarian Kenneth Dowlin, acting city librarian Hope Hayes. Library Commissioner Barbara Rosenberg is here with us also. Where's Barbara? And the Library Commission President Jim Herlihy. In fact, Jim, it's now time for you to come on up and uh, take over. Thanks very much, Jen. And I'd also like to acknowledge uh, 
one of our new commissioners, uh, Commissioner Mark Orsi, who's just walked in the back door there. I'd especially like to thank uh, the Giants and General Manager Peter McGowan for, uh, for promoting this campaign that's run for the last four years. It's been a marvelously successful campaign. Um, every one of the children in this room have read eight books this summer. Um, I know my daughter didn't read eight books this summer. Uh, so you've really got, we've got to take our hats off to you and I think you all deserve a great round of applause for reading eight books this summer. I think it's a terrific example of the public-private partnership that uh, we here in San Francisco are, are looking to foster and certainly here at the public library. It's been running successfully for the last four years and uh, I think everybody benefits from it. And in particular, we're especially thankful to the Giants for recognizing this great accomplishment of uh, reading your eight books this summer by donating over 5,000 tickets to uh, upcoming Giants games. And uh, I know uh, having that kind of reward at the end of it makes, uh, makes getting through the eight books that much more fun. In any case, at this point, I would, uh, I would also like to thank uh, Mayor Frank Jordan for, um, for all the support that the city has given to the libraries in this very difficult budget year. And uh, we have, um, hopefully we've come out of this quite whole, so uh, we want to thank the mayor very much for his support there also. Jonathan and John, Jonathan Kwok, John Nien. You want to bring these two old fellows up here with you? And uh, I suppose you have some uh, little something to do here. Peter, maybe you'll start us off on the, your part. Me? Yeah, come on, start us off. Well, I'd just like to say thanks to these kids for reading the books. The Giants uh, care a lot about the community. And two things that we care the most about are education and kids. I don't know how many of you know it, but on the Friday before the baseball season started, every single Giants player was in a San Francisco school that morning. So this is an organization that cares about kids who are our future, and to see kids like you who are interested in your own future by reading, by taking the time to read and improve your minds this is just great to see, and we're very glad to be able to support that. I've got a box uh, someplace, I think, um, yeah, Dave has, that I'd like to present to the mayor. But, mayor, this is some um, 5,200 tickets to Giants games, and I'm very thankful to be able to say these aren't so easy to get anymore. This library, I love reading. I love the Giants. Some kids come here to the library during the summer just to get Giants ticket, but not me. Thank you, Giants, for the baseball tickets. One, two, three. Go, everybody. Go, Go Giants. Giants. Beat the Braves. <laughs> Well, thank you, Peter, for these uh, tickets. You know, and as a former police officer, I'd much rather receive tickets like this than have to give out tickets uh, the other way around. But I, too, want to, to uh, first welcome everybody here today and congratulate the library commissioners and the library staff and you, the students, and uh, some of the teachers and families who are here today with these students, with all those great San Francisco Giants caps on. And certainly, I want to thank Peter McGowan, the general manager, and I see Larry Bear, who also just arrived here to my right also from the San Francisco Giants. Let's give him a hand as well. Because what uh, the San Francisco Giants are doing is they're, they're really a strong part of the piece of the fabric of San Francisco. And not only that, but they really want to get more involved as you've seen today. You know, I see over here, it says San Francisco Library and Giants right on this podium. And I look at it a number of different ways. All of us love to play baseball. We always have fantasy visions of loving to be able to do what Will Clark or Barry Bonds can do and be in a cleanup spot and hit a grand slam home run. But I'll tell you, also, 
in order to be successful in any career that you might decide to go into as a youngster and then going up into high school and to college and then to your own adulthood, you have to be a giant when it comes to perseverance and reading. You have to know that it just doesn't come natural like you see Will Clark or Barry Bonds. You have to work at it. You have to really persevere. And when you persevere and you study hard, as you have, all of you, reading eight books over the summer, that gets you into a great training program where you can continue on to learn more and educate yourself and expand your horizons. So not all of us can be baseball players, but we can be naturals and we can be giants in all of our own fields if we continue to study hard and continue to read. And so I congratulate each and every one of you for what you are doing. You're showing incentive, you're showing that uh, you really do like to read books in a variety of different subjects, and you're going to be rewarded for it. Because now, thanks to the San Francisco Giants and Peter McGowan, I have over 5,000 tickets here that you're going to be able to uh, have. We'll distribute them to the different uh, people, all the youngsters who have read eight or more books. So you are in the forefront. You're in leadoff batters, I'm sure, I guess the best way to put it right now. And we're about to start heading for home here with some great tickets. So let's again, I will congratulate all of you as students, but I also want to congratulate the San Francisco Giants for getting more involved in the community, for showing they really do care, not just at home plate, but in all of our homes here as residents of San Francisco. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Mayor, don't be caught outside the stadium trying to scalp any of those now. <laughs> I wanted to let you know that uh, there is a good game going on out there tonight, and we're going to head back now to uh, do our job and try and beat the Atlanta Braves tonight. Thank you all. Congratulations to you all. And uh, keep reading. Did you read some books this summer? Yes. How many? 160. 160 books? How did you carry them all? I came here every day. Every day? Wow. And for what two was hours. Your, for two hours. What was your favorite book? Louise Build a House. Wow. And what was that one about? She was building a house for her sister. Oh, that's very nice. And do you plan to go to the Giants game? Yes. Okay. So did you enjoy this summer reading program at the San Francisco Public Library? Yes. Thanks very much. Um, tell me, uh, did you participate in the summer reading program this summer at the library? Yes. And how many books did you read? Mm, ten. Ten? Which one was your favorite? Froggy mm, Sharks one. And what was that about? Uh, no, I think it was Sharks Web and O Yeller. Oh. Mm. O Yeller was about a dog. It's about a dog who saved. Who saves his, who saves his family from a bear, and and he died. Mm -hmm. And did you read any baseball books? No. Do you like baseball? Yes. You gonna go to the game? Yep. Good. Who was your favorite baseball player? Darren Lewis. And did you participate in the summer reading program this year? Yeah. Oh, you did. How many books did you read? A lot, because I don't know the exact number. You don't know the exact number. No. Which one was your favorite book? The Best Bad Thing. The Best Bad Thing. Well, what was that about? It was about a girl that noticed that bad things weren't always as bad as she thought. Uh -huh. Well, that sounds like a good book. And do you plan to go to the Giants game on the 25th of September? Yes. Great. And who's your favorite baseball player? Um, Matt Williams. How many books did you read? Around 10, 11. 10 or 11? Did you read yeah. any baseball books? Yeah. yeah. Which ones? A lot of ones? Well, there was um, You Be the Umpire, which, um, which gave you real situations, and then you had to decide what should happen, and then they give you what really, th what decision was made. Oh, okay. And um, then there was then there was this new Giants history book that I got f from um, my aunt for my birthday, which um, st which gives the history back from when they first started all the way to now. So, mm -hmm. so, so it's real. And that was a good book. Yeah. Uh, where did the Giants start? In New York. Oh, okay. Um, 
Which library do you go to? Uh, the Merced branch. Hi, I'm Brian Hickerson. You're watching at the Public Library on City Watch, Cable 54. La Korea, San Francisco's 15-year-old rap artist, will be performing at the Portola Reading Center Wednesday, September 29th at 3.30. La Korea's performance is part of the grand opening celebration of Portola Reading Center's new Teen Corner. The Teen Corner features expanded collections of tapes, magazines, and paperbacks, most often asked for by teens. So don't miss La Korea at the Portola Reading Center Wednesday, September 29th at 3.30. And while you're there, check out the new Teen Corner. Come to the main library's Lurie Room each Thursday for a free noontime video show. The September showings will be Classic Tales, the short story video, beginning September 2nd with the showing of The Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe and The Horse Dealer's Daughter by D.H. Lawrence. On September 9th, The Man and the Snake and The Return by Ambrose Bierce. And on September 16th, the showing of The Sky is Gray by Ernest Gaines. On September 23rd, Who Am I This Time by Kurt Vonnegut Jr. And finally, September 30th, Norman and the Killer by Joyce Carol Oates and Two Soldiers by William Faulkner. Serving the city of San Francisco since 1917, the main library located in Civic Center at Larkin and McAllister Streets is open on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Tuesdays with evening hours from 12 noon to 9 p.m. and Friday, 12 to 6 p.m. The San Francisco room on the third floor is open on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Fridays from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. Thursday and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 12 noon, and 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. The Rare Book Room is open to the public on Wednesday and Fridays from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., Thursdays from 10 a.m. to 12 noon, and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 12 noon, and again from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Join us on Tuesday, September 14th for a reading and discussion on Writing and Community, the Book Arts. Moderated by San Francisco poet Michael Palmer, we'll hear from noted printer, poet, and type scholar Alastair Johnston, who printed this lovely edition of Legacy by Lucia Berlin, and who compiled a bibliography of the White Rabbit Press in 1985. Joining him will be printing student and poet Dale Going, who wrote She Pushes With Her Hands, published by her own M Press in Mill Valley, California. And rounding out the evening will be Joyce Lancaster Wilson, author, actress, and early childhood educator, who, along with her husband, the late Adrian Wilson, wrote the Making of the Nuremberg Chronicle. Come to the Special Collections Department on the third floor of the main library at 7 p.m. on Tuesday, September 14th for a free reading and discussion co-sponsored with the San Francisco State University Poetry Center. Here now is a listing of the Children's Events Calendar for September at your San Francisco Public Libraries.
Want to learn how to read? Want to help someone else learn to read? Contact Project Read of the San Francisco Public Library at 557-4388. Project Read is an adult literacy program that provides volunteer one-to-one -one tutoring for adult learners. Project Read's support of tutors and students includes tutor orientation and training, continuing education workshops for tutors and students, reading diagnostics for students, family programs, and referrals to classroom instruction at community college centers and to other agencies in the community. There are many ways you can help adults achieve their personal reading goals. Call Project Read to find out how. Learn to read or be a reading tutor. Phone 557-4388. It's Kiwi time at the Sunset Branch Library. On Wednesday, September 29th at 7 p.m., the Sunset Branch presents A New Zealand Odyssey, a travel slide talk by Gary Holloway. Mr. Holloway, who leads walking tours for both the California Academy of Sciences and City Guides, has traveled to New Zealand three times. His program will feature photos of his most recent trip to the North Island of New Zealand, where he spent five weeks traveling the entire island. Join Gary Holloway for a New Zealand Odyssey at the Sunset Branch, Wednesday evening, September 29th at 7 p.m. The Sunset Branch Library is located at 1305 18th Avenue. The hours of operation are Tuesdays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Wednesdays 1 to 9 p.m., and Thursdays and Fridays from 1 to 6 p.m. The children's room is open Thursdays and Fridays from 2 to 6, Tuesdays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Wednesday afternoons and evenings from 2 p.m. to 8 The beautiful West Portal Branch Library is located at 190 Lenox Way and is open on Tuesdays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. with evening hours on Wednesdays from 1 to 9 p.m. and Thursday and Friday afternoons from 1 to 6 p.m. Located along the El Terravel Muni Metro Line at 1200 Terravel Street, the Parkside Branch Library is open on Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays from 2 to 6 p.m. Tuesdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Wednesday afternoons and evenings from 1 to 9 p.m. Serving the Outer Richmond, the Anza Branch Library, located at 550 37th Avenue, is open Tuesdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Wednesdays 1 to 9 p.m., and Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays from 1 to 6 p.m. The Friends 13th Annual Literary Series, opening September 13th, brings 10 literary stars to the Herbst Theater from its start to January 13th. In addition, an October 21st special event at Masonic Auditorium features Maya Angelou, presidential inaugural poet. Here are all the whens and whos. The series begins Monday, September 13th with Wallace Shawn, playwright and actor. On Tuesday, September 21st, novelist Barbara Kingsolver. Wednesday, October 6th, author and New Yorker fiction writer Mavis Gallant. On Tuesday, October 12th, Mary Oliver, Pulitzer and National Book Award winning poet. Thursday, October 14th, brings Pulitzer Prize novelist Jane Smiley. 
On November 8th, a Monday, A.S. Byatt, author. Thursday, November 18th, Edmund White, Genet biographer and author. Thursday, December 2nd, Oakland journalist Jessica Mitford. Monday, December 13th, architectural writer Witold Rybzinski. And Thursday, January 13th, Sarah Paretsky, novelist. The October 21st Maya Angelou special event at Masonic Auditorium is not included in the series. For ticket information, call 392-4400 or write City Box Office. Tickets are selling quickly, so call now. Welcome to City Watch, San Francisco's government access television channel. Hello, I'm Supervisor Angela Aliotto, the President of the Board of Supervisors. City Watch is a valuable resource for the citizens of San Francisco. It will be used for many purposes, including coverage of public meetings, information during emergencies, and notification of city meetings and services. Future uses of the channel may include teleconferencing and data transmission. The primary goal of City Watch is to expand your awareness of local government and the decision-making process. Thank you very much for watching. The San Francisco Public Library's Services for the Deaf and Hearing Impaired are located on the second floor of the main library in the Civic Center. Staffed with personnel fluent in American Sign Language, the Services for the Deaf and Hearing Impaired contain numerous resources for and about the deaf and hearing impaired. Deaf services may be reached via TTD at phone number 557-4433 or voice phone at 557-4434. Hours of operation are Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 12 noon to 6 p.m. and Tuesdays from noon to 9 p.m. July 10th. The day to move the Pioneer Monument had finally arrived, and it promised to be quite a show. The crowds started to gather early on that Saturday morning, while the monstrous trucks were hooked up to the rigging that would carry the 47-foot-high monument to its new home. And the questions hung in the air that morning like the fog. How heavy is it? How are they going to move it? Where's it going? And how did it get here in the first place? The Pioneer Monument was given to the city of San Francisco by gold rush tycoon and philanthropist James Litt and was erected in 1894. For 12 years, the monument stood guard in front of the old city hall, which collapsed in the 1906 earthquake. Sculpted by Frank Happersberger, the monument pays homage to early California pioneers. The central female statue represents California, and the four surrounding sculptures represent early days, the gold rush, commerce, and plenty. After the 06 earthquake, the Civic Center area was totally redesigned, leaving the Pioneer Monument resting by itself on this lonely corner of Marshall Square. In 1988, the citizens of San Francisco voted for a bond measure to build a new main library on Marshall Square. During the design phase of the new main library, it became apparent that the Pioneer Monument and the new main library could not coexist on Marshall Square in a manner suitable to both the aesthetic demands of the monument and the design and space requirements of the new main library. The idea of moving the monument became a subject of controversy and debate during the design stages of the new main library. Native American groups wanted the monument to be dumped in the bay because of its depiction of Native Americans during the early days of the California missions. And preservation groups wanted the monument to stay put as an indicator of the pre-earthquake Civic Center. When the dust finally settled, it was decided by the Art, Planning, and Library Commissions 
that the monument and the library would best be served if the monument was moved to a new location. And that new location is on Fulton Street between the current main library and the new main library site. A new foundation was constructed and poured while the monument was being prepared for its block and a half journey. Montgomery Contractors Incorporated and Almas International were given the task of moving the monument to its new home. And a monumental task it would be. Delbert Reed of Almas International explains how the monument was prepared for the move. The very first thing we done when we come in is uh, we dug down and placed four jacking mats. Then we come in with a vertical boring machine and bored 14 holes through it and fastened it up to our jacking beams. The next step was to jack it up nine foot high and block it off. And at that point, we brought in fill sand and filled it up to street level. When we was up to street level, we put steel plate over the sand and placed 28 dollies under it. Saturday morning, July 10th. With the dollies and steel plating in place, it was now time to get the show on the road. The huge trucks were fascinating to watch as they pulled and turned the monument inch by inch onto Hyde Street. Then were big uh, Pacific trucks. Uh, the big truck 700 horsepower and the uh, little one was uh, 350. The torque converters, all automatic transmissions with planetaries in the wheel to give you a lot more power. And the weight of the monument, all sorts of numbers had been tossed about. The monument was around 850 ton itself, and we had 150 ton equipment, but it's up to 1,000 ton gross. And we should be real close on that because uh, we take our PSI reading on our hydraulic jacks, and we would be within the 3 or 4 percent. 850 tons, approximately the weight of 133 African elephants. The construction team was hoping that the move would take all of one day, but turning the monument onto Hyde Street had taken up a bit more time than anticipated. Finally, late in the afternoon, the monument made its dash up Hyde Street. As the sun started to set, it was decided to leave the monument resting on Hyde Street overnight. The next morning, the monument was then pulled onto Fulton Street and inside the construction site fence. And then it sat there for all approximately a week while we were preparing the new site. And then we done the reverse there. We filled it with sand, laid steel plate over, drove over the steel plate, and then built our jack cribs and removed our dollies. And that's at the point we are now. We're going to remove the sand and jack it down to the final location. After the relocation of the Pioneer Monument, Mr. Reed was asked if this was the strangest thing his crew had ever moved. It's probably one of the oddest things. Uh, the Spruce Goose was odd, but probably not as odd as uh, this monument. You don't move very many monuments in a lifetime. Many people are to be congratulated for the successful relocation of the 99-year-old Pioneer Monument. It was handled with the utmost care and with a respect for its past. May it enjoy even more than 99 years in its new home. Check out the library's programs for infants and toddlers. In the children's room of the main library, come for a lap sit at 10.30 a.m. on Saturdays. The Anza Branch, Wednesdays at 7.15 p.m. Chinatown Branch, call for dates, Saturdays at 10 a.m. Merced Branch, Tuesdays at 10 a.m. In the Mission, Saturdays at 11 a.m. Noe Valley Sally Brun Branch, Wednesday evenings at 7. In North Beach, Tuesdays at 10.15 a.m., except for the third Tuesday of the month. In the Parkside, Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Potrero Branch, Thursdays at 1.30 p.m. Richmond Branch, Saturdays at 10.30 a.m. Call for dates. 
The Sunset Branch asks for you to call for the schedule for Lapsin. West Portal, 10.30 a.m. on Saturdays. And Western Edition, 10.30 a.m. on Saturdays. That's the Lapsit Program, stories, songs, and rhymes for infants and toddlers. Dial a Story is a telephone service offering poems, rhymes, riddles, songs, and stories for children. Presented by the Office of Children's Services of the San Francisco Public Library, Dial a Story is offered in three languages, English, Spanish, and Cantonese. For English stories, dial 626-6516. For Spanish stories, dial 552-0535. And for Cantonese stories, dial 552-0534. Now here's a sampling of some Dial-A-Story fun. Hello, thank you for calling Dial-A-Story, presented by Children's Services, San Francisco Public Library. Our story today is The Great Big Enormous Turnip by Alexei Tolstoy. Once upon a time, an old man planted a little turnip and said, Grow, grow, little turnip, grow strong. And the turnip grew up sweet and strong and big and enormous. Then one day, the old man went to pull it up. He pulled and pulled again, but he could not pull it up. So he called the old woman. The old woman pulled the old man, and the old man pulled the turnip, and they pulled and pulled again but they could not pull it up. So the old woman called her granddaughter. The granddaughter pulled the old woman, the old woman pulled the old man, and the old man pulled the turnip. And they pulled and pulled again, but they could not pull it up. The granddaughter called the black dog. The black dog pulled the granddaughter. The granddaughter pulled the old woman. The old woman pulled the old man, and the old man pulled the turnip. And they pulled and pulled again but they could not pull it up. The black dog called the cat. The cat pulled the dog. The dog pulled the granddaughter. The granddaughter pulled the old woman. The old woman pulled the old man. The old man pulled the turnip. And they pulled and pulled again, but still they could not pull it up. So the cat called the mouse. The mouse pulled the cat. The cat pulled the dog. The dog pulled the granddaughter. The granddaughter pulled the old woman. The old woman pulled the old man. And the old man pulled the turnip. They pulled and pulled again. And up came the turnip at last. And that night they all had an enormous turnip dinner. And that's all there is. There isn't any more. Locria, San Francisco's 15-year-old rap artist, will be performing at the Portola Reading Center Wednesday, September 29th at 3.30. Locria's performance is part of the grand opening celebration of Portola Reading Center's new Teen Corner. The Teen Corner features expanded collections of tapes, magazines, and paperbacks, most often asked for by teens. So don't miss LaCrea at the Portola Reading Center, Wednesday, September 29th at 3.30. And while you're there, check out the new Teen Corner at the Portola Reading Center, 2434 San Bruno Avenue. See ya! Your history shouldn't be a mystery. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Pancho Villa and Zapata. Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. King of Samoa. Nadia Carlo. The library is the place to be, and a hero is more than a sandwich, G. Knowledge, power, use it. Bruce Lee. Maybe Magic. Wesley Snipes, Spike Lee, Minister Farrakhan. The library, knowledge, power, use it. The Chinatown Branch Library, located along the Powell Street cable car line at 1135 Powell Street, is open on Tuesdays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m with evening hours on Wednesdays from 1 to 9 p.m. and Thursdays and Fridays from 1 to 6 p.m. The children's room is open Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays from 2 to 6 p.m. and Tuesdays and Saturdays 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Wednesdays 2 to 8 p.m. Located in the heart of the Bayview District at 5075 3rd Street, the Bayview Anna E. Wadden Branch is open Monday, Thursday, and Friday from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m., Tuesdays 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Wednesdays open at 1 p.m. till 9 in the evening. 
City guides are volunteers who enjoy the city and its stories. Let them share their knowledge and enthusiasm with you on these free walking tours of various San Francisco locations. Most walks take about one and a half hours and only group reservations are needed. Many branches offer story programs for three to five-year-olds. In addition to the schedule you are now watching, special times can be arranged for preschool and daycare groups. Please call the nearest branch to make appointments with the children's librarian. Located in the heart of the Mission at 3359 24th Street, the Mission Branch Library is open on Tuesdays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Wednesday afternoons and evenings from 1 to 9 p.m., and Thursdays and Fridays from 1 to 6 p.m. The Children's Room at the Mission Branch Library is open on Monday, Thursday, and Friday afternoons from 2 to 6 p.m. Tuesdays and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Wednesday afternoons and evenings from 2 to 8 p.m. Located in the Outer Mission, the Excelsior Branch Library at 4400 Mission Street is open Tuesdays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Wednesdays with evening hours from 1 to 9 p.m., and Thursdays and Fridays from 1 to 6 p.m. An example of one of San Francisco's many beautiful Carnegie-era branch libraries, the Bernal Branch is located on 500 Cortland Avenue. It is open on Tuesdays from 10 to 12 noon, closed for lunch, and then open again from 1 to 6. On Wednesdays from 1 till 9 in the evening, and Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays from 1 to 6 p.m. The Friends of the Public Library conduct a great tour of the main library on the third Wednesday of each month. Meet us in the morning at 10.30 at the welcome desk in the lobby for a delightful free tour. No reservations necessary. You too can be a friend, a friend of the San Francisco Public Library. Join us. For more information, phone the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library at 557 4257. You've been watching At the Public Library here on cable channel 54, City Watch. At the Public Library features news and information about the San Francisco Public Library system. And for a printed copy of some of the information in this program, pick up a copy of At the Public Library at your branch or at the main library. Tune in next time for more at the Public Library. And thanks for watching.